Now on sunrise, February marks the beginning of purple martin nesting season, a type of bird that needs a lot of human help. And Alex Alisi is at the Orlando Science Center learning all about the largest swallow in North America and how we'll help take care of them. Hello everyone and welcome to the Science of It here at the Orlando Science Center. I'm here with Tori and Tori, it's February, which I hear is a very special month for the Science Center. Yes, so we are just starting our purple martin nesting season. So very okay. exciting for us because we do actually have a purple martin birdhouse out in Lock Haven Park. That was sponsored by the Disney Conservation Fund. So if you've seen these gourds and this birdhouse hanging outside, that's what these are for, our okay. purple martins. So these are really interesting birds. There are a couple different species that live in the United States. The ones that we're talking about here today are the ones that live on the eastern side. So okay. that species in particular is almost completely dependent on human housing. Okay. So that sounds really interesting, right? Like yeah. how these birds were here before humans. How did that happen? Well. At first, they would go after other birds' nests, other cavities, rock crevices. They just go after something that someone else wasn't using. Very smart birds to do that, right? Work smarter, not harder. Right. Go right into a little pre-made condo. <laughs> and the people who were first living in Florida thousands of years ago would use gourds, uh, like we've seen, like squash pumpkins, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. They would hollow out these gourds, use it for cooking liquids, water, storage containers for all different kinds of things. So when they would clear that out, they'd hang it up, and these birds just took full advantage. Like, this must be for me, I'm going right in. Wonderful. Um, and that wasn't really a problem for the people living there. They actually liked it and kept doing it, and that tradition has continued. So there is the Purple Martin Association that you can purchase and sponsor your own birdhouse and hang these up as well. So these are really interesting bird species. They are the largest out of all of the swallows. So okay. you see the um, shape of that hole there. That is on purpose, the size and the shape of that, because we do have invasive species of birds here mm -hmm. that affect purple martins and other bird species as well. We don't want to accidentally house them. So right. these, these condos are for purple martins only. And if you pop that lid off there, you'll see some bedding that I have provided in there. So the pine straw is put in there by the keepers, and the birds will actually bring oak leaves specifically, okay. and that's how they form their nest. So that's how I know um, when I go to mark our data when a nest begins when I start seeing those awesome those leaves in there so the next thing I want to point out to you folks is that little clipboard that, that we say. have there said so you're marking data what kind of data are you marking Yes, this is for conservation, for research on the species. We work with an ornithologist at Disney as well. So you can see this is an empty sheet right here because um, our season hasn't started yet. Okay. But there's a little key at the bottom here. You can see empty cavity, nest, eggs, young, hatching, etc. So our first year that we did it, you can see nobody came. X's, X's all across. And that didn't surprise us because right. purple martins are sight loyal. Have you what ever heard of that before? No, what does that mean? Yes, sight loyal means they're going to go to the same place every single time. Okay. So we had visitors this year, but nobody um, actually came to nest. But then that following year, we did have birds come to nest. We were very okay. successful. We had about four families that, wow. that came and laid eggs, and they all fledged and hatched. My role is monitoring the nesting and also the babies as well. So let's say it's a thunderstorm. It's raining mm -hmm. outside, which happens a lot. Um, in the summertime, yep. it is our wet season or I can't get out to the house for, for any other reason. And I happen to come into, um, instead of just finding eggs, I find some young or even an older one. Mm -hmm. That's what this sheet here is for. These are true to life sizes. So with a gloved hand, I'll pick up that baby, set him on top of this sheet, and it can give me an extremely accurate age wow. based on these pictures here. So you can start to see what they look like. Not really that cute, not really yeah. that bird-like at yeah. first, right? Takes a little bit of time for them to grow in those feathers but then check this out only 15 or 16 days old growing quite a lot they grow very quickly don't and they? then yes and then by the end of that 28 days that's the bird that we recognize more so these are beautiful birds let me show you a few pictures of what the adults look like okay. so here's one of the adult males here nice and purple martin yeah. right that iridescent royal deep blue very easy to spot the males when we're trying to determine if they're checking out the nesting, how many pairs there are, very easy to spot the males. The females are a little trickier um, because they do have this white belly here. A lot of the younger males um, will look like this as well, just slightly different, so it can be a little tricky. We like that they eat a lot of insects for us, dragonflies, wasps, uh, mutter butterflies, moths, animals like that. So since insect populations are in decline, we can do our part by planting native plants and wildflowers especially. So I got this really cool book 
from the Florida Wildlife Foundation. It tells you a bunch of native wildflowers and how to take care of them and how easy it can be or how difficult it can be. Depending on where you live, you want to pick a plant that's really going to thrive in that garden. So healthy insect populations mean healthy animal populations as well. Uh, Satori, people want more information not only about the birds but about other animals here at the Science Center. Where can they go? What can they do for that? You're going to want to visit our website which is osc.org and you'll find information for two different animal encounters that we have and then also since it is the beginning of our nesting season we will have tours out to the Purple Martin house. Okay. We'll lower the house down. I'll bring down a gourd and maybe if we're lucky enough we'll get to see some eggs and babies this year. That's awesome, Tori. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for joining us here on The Science of It. Now, if you're looking for some of the other cool stuff going on at The Science Center, keep in mind, they're open daily from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., except on Wednesdays.